Hi, I'm Sam Johnson, creator of Geek Girl and Carpaccini, Voodoo Junkie here from Omaha, and you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm our host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. He's been on the show before talking about his very popular Geek Girl uh, comic, which is, of course, geekgirlcomics.com. Uh, we are joined today by the ever talented Sam Johnson. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing good, doing good. We couldn't get you on for your Kickstarter campaign, which is unfortunate, but the good news is it was successful, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it went it went great actually. It was it was the biggest one yet. So like the you know, obviously part of the purpose of these Kickstarters is to build the audience for Geek Girl and that's an ongoing series. So yeah, very pleased with that. What changed from this Kickstarter to the previous one, obviously you got more money, which is obvi uh, is a great financial uh, relief. Uh, but from a promotional standpoint, did you do anything differently? Mm, not particularly. I mean, it was it part of what contributed it to it being bigger was it's um, it was for as well as the new two issues, it was for the new collection. Yeah, that means bigger. Obviously, we've always talked about Geek Girl, but we've touched upon uh, Guano Man, and uh, I don't think we've really touched on Gold Town either. You know, for those that don't know about your other projects as well, they know about Geek Girl, but tell us about more about Guano Man and uh, Gold Town. So Guano Guy is a guest appearance in some issues of Geek Girl. He's a character owned by Mark Darden. Basically, what happened was in a previous Kickstarter, you could get drawn into uh, the there's a plane scene in the comic that's taking some of the members of Geek Girls would be super team to their HQ. Uh, and you, the idea was for people to get themselves and a friend or partner drawn in, but um, Mark wanted to um, get his characters in. And from that, um, I decided just to kind of make them part of the, the plot and, and pretend, well, one of them, a potential member of Geek Girls team. So, I mean, I, I know Mark and um, Guano Guy, who is a very um, unheroic, hero uh is more bothered about merchandising than anything else uh there's actually mark's kickstarter for guano guy is still running so oh. if you search guano guy g-u-a-n-o guy on kickstarter then uh, you'll be able to check that one out uh gold town is a tie-in story i've written a few issues a few anthologies of the gold town this one, uh, there's a, a, a book out at the moment called Geek Girl Incoming that sets up the future of, uh, of Geek Girl. And part of this book is a, a short Gold Town story that ties into the main series. Yeah, I was looking at the Geek Girl Incoming. It looks like you're you're really trying to ramp up the, the action this time around. You know, more bad guys for Geek Girl to fight and all that stuff as well, too. From a character perspective, how is... Uh, creating new villains for Geek Girl going? What's new, particularly, I'm really pleased with because in what will be issue nine uh, that's previewed in the, the Geek Girl incoming comic, uh, we've got a potential arch enemy for Geek Girl, Mean Girl. And like, uh, as Mean Girl says uh, when they're battling, like, how has this not happened sooner? uh so and she's a really fun character to write she's um she's got a, a super tech phone that can blast rainbows into people's eyes that make them hallucinate being attacked by unicorns while listening to a justin bieber and ariana grande mashup uh and she's all like totally valley and like you know i'm like, so a super villain uh so yeah she's great fun to write so yeah she comes in in issue 9 i say which is previewed in, in giggle incoming uh setting herself up uh, to potentially be Ruby K, aka Geek Girl's arch ne nemesis. So, to, for, just we haven't covered it. For those that don't know, Geek Girl, Geek Girl is the hot popular college chick. Ruby K landed a pair of super tech glasses. Initial impact to those, this was not used to the super strength, alienating her cool kid friends, knocking drinks over them. Uh, then, not buying the whole superhero thing, but then she's grown into a, a bona fide superhero. Uh, and being offered a part in, well, fronting a super team, which is which is where we're at with the series as it stands. 
Now, it's been a few years since we, we've last talked, to be honest. I, I was looking back. I think it's like three years, to be uh, perfectly honest. So it's been a while. So you, you've gone through, um, you were finishing up, I think, book, f or you were starting book four uh, when we last talked because we, we talked about issue three. And I issue four, I believe, was the, the villains uh, doing a bank heist or something along that line that I that I saw the the teaser for, which I thought was really awesome. Um, from a, from a writing perspective, how how have you evolved yourself personally in these last three years? Oh, that's a really difficult uh, as as a person or as a writer. Well, as a person first, and then we'll go into your writing. Okay, so I mean, that's a difficult one one to answer. But as a person, I guess I've got to be more sort of I've had to become more uh, sort of facilitating to other people. Like my girlfriend's uh, got three kids, uh, one of which is a handful, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so uh, yeah, so kind of. Uh, I mean, we've we've been going out nearly three years, so the, the timing of that that's been the biggest uh, change in my life. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult to say how, how you sort of evolved much as a person in, in terms of uh, writing and in terms of geek girl. I've, I've now got a clear plan of of, of what, well, I'm at, I, I always had loads of ideas, but I've got a sort of concrete plan for, for where things go from here which is in the current issue so where, where the issues that are available now which you can get at like comicsology as well as indie planet geekgirlcomics.com are six and seven um which are this this arc where geek girls super team's supposed to have come together uh but things take a bit of a turn and, and her and one of her teammates in a bff summer uh, go to a club night anyway also introduced in this arc is carbraccini voodoo junkie hit woman uh the ex uh <laughs> turned supernatural gun for hire who uh is going to be playing a big part in in the geek girl series um so she comes in in issue six i think it is yeah issue six and then we'll return in issues eight and nine and that will lead directly into the carbraccini voodoo junkie hit woman series so i wanted that uh, most of that has been done for a while but i wanted to introduce her to a wider audience who's appeared in, in an anthology uh halloween issue anthology effects before but i wanted to introduce her to a bigger audience before putting her series out um and issue nine has got a really nice uh, limited variant color co cover of cover by carlos Villas. um so yeah issue six is her first appearance in the university geek girl and this will lead into her mini series which will in turn go back to the Geek Girl series where she's going to have a big impact on Geek Girls would be super too. I know you've been hinting at that uh, hit woman for a while now. Actually, uh, every time we we talk, you 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 drop her name in there, so it's 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 finally good to see her uh, on the on the page, so to speak. Yeah, I mean it's a character I'm, I'm very in invested in. It's uh, there's a depth to this character. There's there's a a, 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 a character development going on, and um, I say I wanted wanted uh, more people to be familiar with her before we put her, her own book out into the world and i think uh well i i, I am very happy with how she's introduced in the face of the geek girl and people i really enjoy the character she's over the top scenery chewing like her, her intro in geek girl when she's walking around a supermarket smoking a cigarette uh and uh and then she thinks the the tale has short changed her so he, he really he really she lets him have it it's going down well and i think as i say more of her to come in issues eight and nine which issue eight will probably be coming out about the end of october beginning of november yes. so there's there's a few issues there for you to sort of get to know her and then i i would imagine that that, that she'll have a, a bit of a a bit of a fan base ready for a mini series then with all of these series that you're writing with geek girl being your your primary one you know how are you able to for your story arcs how are you able to really kind of make sure that your ideas don't bleed from one genre to the other um well i mean I, i'm not opposed to there being a bit of a, a genre crossover i mean Carver is, is a very different character to Kika, so her miniseries has, has a bit of a horror element to it. 
Um, so, I mean, my main sort of aim with, with what I'm introducing to these girls is, is weird. Mm -hmm. So, they, uh, I, I always reference Grant Morrison, Doom Patrol Influence, like if you like the, 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 the excellent TV series of Doom Patrol, that's also ha very heavily inspired by what Grant did. Um, that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm introducing to. What is, you know, uh, primarily it's it's a, a college world that we, that we meet Ruby and her, her BFF Summer and, and her mean girlfriend then. But now because of what's happened with her as a superhero, she's now uh, out of college and is, has got this gig front in a super team. So it's, it's a super team book, but there's quirkiness and weirdness to it. And I'm not like, putting any restrictions on on what you know if, what genre that may may take one of the interesting characters for for gold town that i saw was um they called him the zombie i think it was uh yeah i mean that's like a the, it's, there's a guy basically walking around like a zombie uh, because he his daughter moved to this gold town as it's as it's coined um, to make it big and has never been seen since and he's basically spending his, his life trying to find her so you know he, he practically doesn't sleep he's, he's obsessed and so he you know he sort of comes across as a bit of a, a zombie mm. but he's not an, not an actual one uh, but uh, yeah it's uh, he's in a very difficult position um, there was another gold town story that actually shows what's happened to his daughter, and uh, it's like he kind of knows, but he can't give up. It was, it, was, it was interesting, especially since you referenced Detroit as well, too, since it's just across the way from me. So, Right. Well, Carver's, Carver's from Detroit <laughs> as well. I may have to pick up that issue digitally then uh, just, to, just to read it through. Hopefully you have some nice landmarks. <laughs> um, there's no landmarks. So <laughs> the, la the landmarks were focused on. Uh, well, I mean, the, the where where it's set isn't in Detroit anyway. It's in Goldtown, so it's just from right. there. So sorry about that. I was saying a bit of a tease there, but you know, it's just, <laughs> usually when you see the the city that you're literally across the river from every single day you figure something would appear especially when you hint at detroit. yeah <laughs> well i mean this is a short story in the anthology and right. and like i think detroit features but the, it basically there's a short scene which is pete the pimp in his mm -hmm. office which they hastily have to vacate which takes us to gold town right. so not long spent in detroit with everything that you've done here, you're always a forward-thinking guy when it comes to the promotion of your stuff, as well as your, your story arcs. Um, how far have you written up until for Geek Girl? Uh, well, I mean, I've got, you know, the arcs and plot lines and, and so forth planned. There's loads I've got. But in terms of actual scripts, um, because it, it can only get done as far as fast as grander, the artist can get it done. Mm -hmm. It's basically eight done. He's working on that. Nine is almost done. That will be done in time for you know when he's free to work on it. Um, so the script isn't isn't like way in advance. But in terms of like you know the, the arcs I've got planned. I mean there's there's big things like in in the as I say the current issue issue six and seven where they go to this club. There's a girl that's appears to be kind of stalking Ruby and uh, and some Ruby K geek girl and uh she's part of a much bigger picture and, and in, in, in an upcoming issue um where you can still get to the kickstarter i think and, and there's preview pages in one of the updates where there is tyler one of you girls uh, team x is exploring the xq which was supposed to be a, supposed to have been cleared out ahead of the super team moving in but because the guy that's put this super team together is a bit shady and uh, his right hand man is also well more than a bit shady and uh, he was supposed to do a sweep of the place and make sure everything was out that was supposed to be out but he got very drunk and was too hangover, hangover to do it uh, when he was supposed to so he's a day late so as a result Shay's exploring this HQ and there are things there that should have been gone which are not and what he discovers will will, uh, will play into something bigger as well. What was the biggest challenge of this most recent Kickstarter? Uh, I mean, successfully funding is always a, a positive aspect, but w were there any challenges that you had to face with it? 
Well, I mean, just in terms of running it, the biggest thing was I started out like, because I've, I've got like a part-time day job mm -hmm. and I was doing that at the same time, whereas usually I put the entire time off as holiday, but because of, you know, obviously everything comes back to COVID. So I had been on furlough and then the Kickstarter was time to start when they brought me back. So I needed to spend some time there because I've been off for so long. I didn't want to like immediately go off again and forget everything. So I had to spend some time there. and doing it while doing another job, even though it was only part time doing the Kickstarter. I mean, I think absolutely in my experience, the best way to go for Kickstarter is to devote, if you can, full time to it. Yeah. So that was the only time it was challenging was when I was doing it at while doing the day job as well. And, you know, it requires a lot of energy. And, and I think the main thing as well that I find with Kickstarter, from my experience, if you devote full time to it, you're, you know, as I as, and a lot of people come up with ideas while it's running for, you know, adding new rewards. If you, if you hit stretch goals, what you're going to do for stretch goals and that kind of thing. Um, and if you do it full time, you'll, you'll do something and you'll, you'll get an idea and that can lead to another and all that. Whereas if you're doing it with, you know, half energy, uh, when you've just come back from another job, it, it's not going to flow like that. So basically quickly, on i as i say i needed to spend some time there to, to refresh what i had done because i've been up for months because of furlough due to kickstarter so once i got right i know what i'm doing now bang holiday for the rest of it and from that point on it was fine and i really enjoyed it it wasn't it wasn't it's always challenging because you put a lot into it but this is the sixth one so you know, I've got an idea of the comics launch course. I often reference comics with an X is a great course for uh, learning. Like, well, they do a podcast as well as, as a course. And every week, Tyler James puts out tips for Kickstarter, of which he, you know, is, is almost always involved in a Kickstarter himself. So I've learned a lot in terms of what I'm doing with it. So what I found was, you know, once you kind of know what you're doing and, you know, again, like previously, this is still the case, but one Kickstarter in particular was geared towards bringing in new people to justify us going on going. So you've got then returning backers. So, you know, if you deliver a product that people are happy with, then, you know, they're going to want more. So it's not like, you know, everyone is you back to zero. So no, I enjoyed it. It was uh, I really enjoyed this one, yeah. And as I say it was it was the biggest, yeah. And um, I mean, I put everything into it. You survived. That's the main thing when it comes to these types of, of situations. Yeah, as I say, it was it was comfortable because we hit the goal about ten days before the the end of it. So when it you know when you find yourself in earlier days, we've we've never gone right to the wire. But, you know, people will, that, will, that have run Kickstarters will know that it's, <laughs> that's when it becomes a thing where it's like, it's getting close now. Are we actually going to hit this? So it was nice to, I'd say, 10 days before. So there was no, you know, it was, it was stress free, which is quite unusual when it kicks. <laughs> so it was, it was all good. How about the pandemic, though, when it comes to, creative and and being creative in, in a pandemic um how has that helped you be creative or has it hurt your creativity i don't think it's it's made a great deal of difference to me personally because as i say i've got ideas so far down the road with what i want to do with geek girl and the, the time it takes me to write a script versus what it takes the artist strand to draw it is, you know, <laughs> like that. So I I can't see it's made any impact on me. I, I, and I think Kickstarter has, has kind of thrived. I, I did a previous Kickstarter when it, it was just kicking in uh, the pandemic and I was like, you know, there's, there's so much uncertainty here. So I scaled it down. I didn't want it to be, you know, like buy my book, running it down everyone's throats when, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen then. And, you know, people didn't know about the job security. And now we've, you know, we've, we've been doing it a while. Um, it's things are more certain. So I think another thing 
as I say, I scaled down the one that I started at the, at the beginning. Um, but it turned out Kickstarter actually possibly, I think, actually benefited from it because uh, there was that period when there were no comic shops open. Um, so, you know, people, and again, not being able to make TV shows, stuff like that. People want entertainment. They're spending more time on. They're spending more time on the internet. So I think, and, and Tyler James has, has spoken about this. Um, it seemed like it was beneficial to Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, but as I say, at the time when I was actually in the middle of a campaign, when it all started, that wasn't didn't feel like the right time to be like, right, stretch goals, everybody. <laughs> 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 Will the pandemic affect any of your um, creation of your books or anything like that when it comes to shipping, or are you still kind of in that planning stage there? Um, I, I, I mean, we're you know we're we're not come. I don't know quite where where you are with it, but we're we've got a roadmap from the government yeah. where the intention is that in only about 10 days time if possible things are going to go back to fairly normal i mean we've, we've gone from not being able to go inside like pubs and restaurants and so forth we we can do that now um so but there's this concern about the indian variant so they're kind of deliberating on whether to extend this but the intention until it changes is that on the 21st things are relatively normal so until we get to that point and if it does change it's not going to be like you know six months you now everyone had to adapt to it shipping would, would take longer there's less staff working and i think and this is the case i think with with I mentioned like not being able to make TV shows. Increasingly, they've been able to work out how to do it. You, it's still not, you know, anywhere near the level it would have been without the pandemic. But it, it's the finding ways to do it, um, and and obviously the situation is getting better because you know at the start there was no vaccine. Is there anything that I haven't uh, touched on that you want to share with those that are watching and listening to this? Um, I think th the best thing to do for, for anyone that's that's new to Geek Girl, just go to geekgirlcomics.com and you can join the mailing list and um, you'll get a free digital preview comic and that's that's your best introduction. Um, that's, that's what I would point people to that are new to it. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who is that for you? As, as mentioned, Grant Morrison on Doom Patrol, always always the big one. The, the, I, I sort of developed from that influence the ability to sort of come up with creations thinking in weird mode, which is how I came up with Carbuccini, Voodoo Junkie, Hit Woman, uh, and uh, I think uh, Mean Girls. <laughs> Uh, mobile phone probably wouldn't exist without that influence either. So that that's a, that's the pervading one for me. There's other influences, but in terms of the weirdness that I enjoy, I mean, I, I loved the Doom Patrol TV series. Um, I'm really looking forward to the third one. Um, yeah, I think without that, it would be a diff. What I would be doing in my comics would be different. From a professional standpoint, you've done six Kickstarters. They've been successful. You've created two or three different series in general. You're still writing. You're still being active professionally. You are doing well on that front. From a personal perspective, though, are you successful? Yeah, um, I'm happy with with, uh, with what's going on in my life. Um, I say the, my, my, uh, my girlfriend's circumstances involve me being able to sort of accommodate what she's got to deal with but it's not intrusive to getting my comics work done it, it, it doesn't inhibit it at all um i mean i've, I've known um people in my situation that when they have kids um it's it, the comics thing goes on the shelf um, because you know, when you've got young kids, that's that's where your time's going. So, 
it, it's, I'm, I'm happy with, with where things are at with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hugely important for me to, to keep developing what I'm doing with my comics, keep building Geek Girl. I mean, the, the idea is to to get to the point where it's just like, you know, there's no question this is ongoing for as, as long as I want it to be. I've got, you know, lots to bring to it. And it's you know, and that is the direction it's going in. As I say, with the latest Kickstarter, it was the, it was the smoothest and and the biggest as well. So, the reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Um, I mean, I've been doing this for so long. It's like I'm not the only the only thing. I mean, I, and again, I think with. With Kickstarter, I don't think failure, because Kickstarter is the main venue for it. That's, you know, it's such an organic way of doing it because, you, you know, you get the creators involved. Like, for example, we did, uh, the, there's a free print um, for people that, that back this one, which we hit by hit in our stretch goals, which um, it's going to be a Ruby and, and a BFF summer cosplay and, and in the Geek Girl Facebook group, uh, which you can find on Geek Girl, Geek Hyphen Girl comic book. Um, we had people vote in for who they wanted to see them cosplay. As, so having that interaction um, is great. And because everything happens in real time in Kickstarter, whereas, like as I say, you can get the books at Comixology in the planet. But you'll 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 get a report of sales quite a while later off of Comixology, where you see it as it happens if someone's back to you on Kickstarter. Um, so in terms of failures, as I say, failure is, isn't the word. Just you know, you you try some, you come up with different rewards. Not everyone lands, but um, you know, it's just trial and error. And um, yeah, we got to the point where we you know chopped and changed a couple of things, and I think. I think every reward got back by the end of it that was that we kept. Yeah, there's, there's, that's not a failure. That's that's you know you, you've got to be a bit experimental and, and have fun with it. The younger generation are looking at your work and supporting you, and they're becoming inspired to do their own creative work, either become a comic creator, writer, artist, or whatever they'd like to do creatively. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Um. Well, in terms of inspiring them, it depends how you mean. If, if you're talking about them getting into comics, um, then the best thing I would say is if, depending on what you want to do, the best entry point is anthologies. You'll find uh, you know, these are often being created, especially as, as Kickstarter is quite a good venue for them because if you have a multiple creators involved, then that's multiple people to promote the book. Um, but yeah, forums like uh, Digital Wedding, uh, Facebook groups where you're looking for creators will often have these. And that's a, a better way to, to start is doing a short story for an anthology than something big. So whereas I, I had big ideas and um, you know lots of ideas that required an ongoing series, it, it, you, I didn't go straight in with that. I we started with an issue zero for Geek Girl um and um then a mini and then the ongoing one we built the other to justify it but it's all part of the same thing so if like me which is one of the things i love about comics is the sort of universal universe building thing um if you are to do these stories for anthologies they could be they don't have to be a done in one thing you can like as i say carpaccini voodoo the hit one was introduced in fx Anthology initially wanted story, one story, and then, and then appeared in more, and then there's a geek girl villain that appeared in one of them. Um, so it, that can be part of the bigger picture. You just don't go straight in with right. Here's my ongoing series. Please publish this. Well, I hate to say this, Sam, but you know we're wrapping up this particular interview on Two Geeks Talking. Um, I think you kind of mentioned in a few other points earlier work, but. Just to kind of wrap it all up together, where can we find you on social media and the internet? Uh, okay, so uh, Geek Girl Facebook group, Geek Girl Facebook page, Geek Hyphen Girl comic book. Uh, on Twitter, there's Ruby underscore K, which is K A Y E underscore D A Sam Johnson. 
I'm, I mean, I'm like Sam Johnson Comics is on Instagram. Uh, and as I say, the, the best thing to do to get on board with the Geek Girl is to join the mailing list and then you'll get news on what's coming. And uh, you'll get that free uh, as your preview card. Well, thanks again for coming on the show, Sam. I really do appreciate it. And, of course, as he mentioned, check out all of his massive social medias and check out Geek-Girl as well, too. Tune in next week for another interview on Two Geeks Talking. I believe it's going to be with Ryan Estrada, creator of the Band Book Club, which is nominated for an Eisner. Uh, Unfortunately, his wife couldn't make it to the interview, but we'll be having him on the show So other than that, I want to thank everyone for listening and watching. Make sure you take a look at this interview on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT Media. As I always say every week, everyone has a story to tell and it's up to me to help bring that out.